forget to be or not to be? ETFs or individual stocks? That is the question. So what do we do? Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld, Chief Income Strategist with the Oxford Club. Welcome to State of the Market. One of the most common questions that I receive come from investors who want to know if they should buy ETFs or if they would be better off with individual stocks. Those questions are usually posed in two ways. The first is, should the investor buy some index ETF, like the S&P 500 Spider ticker symbol SPY, or perhaps a growth or value index ETF? The other comes from folks who are intrigued by the sky-high yields of some ETFs like the J.P. Morgan Premium Income Fund ETF, ticker symbol JEPI, which yields more than 11 percent. Now, I'll answer both of those questions now. The first thing I'll say is that if it's an actively managed fund, in other words, not an index fund, but an ETF where a manager is selecting the investments, run. Don't walk away. The overwhelming majority of actively managed funds underperform their benchmarks, and it's been like that for decades. There is no reason to pay someone to manage your money when you can do better on your own or in an index fund. I can handle it by myself. Now, I like index fund ETFs for investors that are not engaged. Not that kind of engaged, meaning some investors are just not interested in managing their money, and that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You can generate solid returns by owning a few index fund ETFs. You likely won't beat the market and you won't generate much income. I'm sorry, what? But your returns will be somewhat in line with the market. And again, that's okay. The market goes up over the long term. So long term returns are pretty decent. But I'm guessing you're not one of those uninterested people just by the fact that you're watching this video and perhaps read financial content online, such as my free e-letter, Wealthy Retirement, or read my book, Get Rich with Dividends, or consume other investing content. Now, if you are interested in being more involved with your own investments, I recommend owning individual stocks heavily weighted on stocks that raise their dividend every year. Sprinkle in a few growth stocks in there too, but owning stocks that raise their dividend every year means you'll generate ever-increasing amounts of income, which you can use to pay bills or reinvest to accelerate your wealth building process. And it doesn't take that much time either. I'm not advocating for trading in and out of stocks, but creating a portfolio of dividend growth stocks that you can check in on a few times a year and make sure the companies are continuing to pay and raise their dividends. You shouldn't have to make too many adjustments once you create the portfolio. For those of you that like those ETFs whose yields are jacked, remember, Wall Street doesn't just give money away. If you're earning 11% in an ETF, while blue chip dividend payers yield 3 or 4%, there's a good reason why. If you're considering an ETF that pays a substantial yield, it is very worth your time to understand how it's paying that high of a yield and the risk involved. In the case of JEPI, the ETF with the 11% yield, it uses options to increase the payout to shareholders. It sells calls on the S&P 500. Now, while that will generate an attractive yield, it caps the upside that the ETF can deliver. Since the ETF's inception, it has underperformed the S&P 500 by about 4.5%, returning 44.3% in the three years it has operated, while the S&P has returned 48.7%, and that includes dividends. So you earned a high yield, but you earned 4.5% less than you would have in an S&P 500 ETF. This is just one example, but typically, funds or ETFs that engineer sky-high yields underperform the broad market, sometimes substantially. It's usually not worth it to chase those yields. So the answer to the question, ETFs or dividend stocks? Well, no surprise here, I prefer dividend stocks. But if you don't want to be involved with your portfolio and want to select a few ETFs and get on with your day and year, well, that's fine too. Just stick with plain vanilla ETFs that focus on broad indexes. Don't go for the pickled mango. It's not going to end well. Trust me. Thanks for watching State of the Market. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. And for more wealth and income building ideas for free, click the link in the description to sign up for Wealthy Retirement. Again, it's absolutely free.